Hello everyone, this is Richard Wilkinson and this is my historical survey. And I decided to do this on the Baptist and the Baptist movement. I've been doing a lot of research in the last about a year or so for different classes on the concept of freedom, the influences on the founding fathers on creating this concept. And so I to notice where part of the influence came from religion, from the Protestant religion. And so I decided to further that research and looking at, as I have been through this entire course, at the uh, dissenter movement, Baptist and the Baptist movement that existed in England. And so I looked at three sources for this to gain more background on this movement, the Anabaptist, Baptist movement, not just in England, but in general to better understand their beliefs, their doctrines and ideas. So the first source I found was a book review of the book Early English Baptist by Stephen Wright. And I decided to read the review, thought the book would be a great source. Wright talks a lot about the history of the Baptist between 1603 to 1649, that was his focus. He uses a bunch of different primary documents and argues that the history of the Baptist wasn't neat little package deal like a lot of historians want to make it where you have the general Baptist and the particular Baptist, but that there was a lot of movement, uh, a lot of um, disagreements with the things. And so he points all of this out in his book. And so I thought this would be a great source to use in my research just to get a better understanding of what was going on with the Baptists and their history during this time. He also, in this book, shows that the general Baptists were divided. You have John Smith, who was a pacifist and didn't really want anything to do with government, where Thomas Helwes was very patriarchal, congregational, thought people could uh, participate in civil government. Uh, he also talks about the particular Baptists that they also weren't just groups that embraced Calvinist ideas on predestination and the atonement. Um, and that before 1644, with the London Confession, there wasn't any real group that saw themselves as a particular Baptist group, that this was something that started around that time and came after that. Um, the review said that the book is a very nuanced, engaging picture of the Baptist, so I'm very excited to read this and was excited to find a review of it. The next source I chose was Rosalie Beck's The Woman of Friends Station, Respectability and Moral Agency Among the 7th Century, 17th Century English Baptists. And she discusses how Baptists in the early 17th century accepted the ideas of the priesthood of believers, local church autonomy, centrality of scripture, uh, for forming their doctrine and the idea of freedom of conscience. And this becomes really important to what I'm trying to research and how these ideas influenced freedom and, and the concept of freedom that we later get, especially the idea of local church autonomy and priesthood of believers, that you didn't need a hierarchy, um, and then looking at scripture instead of other sources as our authority, where, where belief comes from. Last source I chose was a short article by Paul Fittis called A Fourth Strand of the Reformation. And I found this a very interesting article in it. He looks at the Anabaptist dissenter movement. He goes over how this is a fourth strand along with the Lutheran Reformed and Anglican movements. Um, it was based on covenant e ecclesiology, the idea that a covenant was between a, not just an individual and God, but a congregational members. So you had a vertical and horizontal covenants that they would make, and this was done through baptism. Um, the idea of covenant is important to religious freedom because the radical reformers believed that each individual has had to make that covenant. They had to be able to choose this, not be baptized when they were born, but old enough to actually make the idea that I am going to follow Christ and make that covenant. And so this was important because they could choose to do it or not do it. They had the freedom to do that. 
These articles gave me a lot of uh, background on the Anabaptists and other radical reformers, and I'm very excited to keep learning about this movement. Thank you for listening.